Hello fellow homeschool parents. So I just wanted to share with you today how we handle spelling in our homeschool. So as you can see, I don't use a curriculum for spelling. Um, I actually just gathered some word lists from our language arts curriculum that we've used in the past. So we've used uh, the Good and the Beautiful Language Arts and also Logic of English. So I've taken list words from there and created our own spelling lists. Now, because we did Logic of English before, we are very familiar with spelling rules and uh, the different phonograms, the 74 different phonograms. So because of that, I am able to highlight the different phonograms in some of the words that we're working with that week uh, and also teach why certain words are spelled the way that they are to my daughter, like kind of as a reminder to her. So we've already gone over all that, like spelling rules and everything like that before for the last couple of years. So like I said, she's familiar with them. So that's why for us, these kind of mixed word lists work best. So I did before in the past um, try a curriculum for spelling and it was so-so. Like for kindergarten, we didn't do any curriculum. We just worked on spelling words. Um that I thought she needed to learn how to spell. So like different CVC words, words with silent E, uh, words with different consonant blends or digraphs, right? So things like that. But then for last year, I tried a curriculum with her and it just wasn't working. It was based on every week you would be given a word list where they were focusing only on a specific spelling pattern. So like this week, we're focusing all on a Y. So that wasn't really effective for us because of the fact that the student could then just memorize what spelling pattern you're working on that week. And they don't really have to even practice their words because they just remember, well, all the words in my spelling list are going to end in a Y done. Or all the words today are going to end in or have in the middle somewhere double O, you know, or O W or E A or E E, you know. So it was just really predictable like that and there was no retention. So I decided this year to go a different route and go more like the old school route that I went when I was in school. And that's just mixed word lists. And this actually seems to be the best here in our house for my daughter. It's working the best. She's had retention of these words. Now, like I said, I do get these words from the Good and the Beautiful Language Arts. So we're currently on the Good and the Beautiful Language Arts Level 2. I decided to go back a little bit and get her word list from the Good and the Beautiful um, Level K, like some of the harder words that are in there, and then Level 1, and then a few of them from Level 2. And then also go into Logic of English. They have word lists in there. And the word lists that they tend to use for both programs are most commonly misspelled words and like high frequency words and things like that or words that are not always phonetically based. Um, those are the ones that they kind of like to use for their lists. So I just kind of combined them and created lists based off of that. Okay, and here's my master copy of the list I ended up creating. <clears throat> so now I haven't finished doing all the check marks on them, but these are some of the lists of words here. Okay. That's my master copy, and that's what I use to go ahead and then create these packets. Okay. And the way I create these packets, I get my word list. This one here I create on Word, but then all the sheets after it um, are created on CommonCoreSheets.com. They have a spelling, spelling activity generator, and I just go ahead and put our words, and it gives me different spelling activities. So this one is reading cursive words. The other one, as you saw, was a word search. <clears throat> this one is a puzzle, crossword puzzle. So I just went ahead and put different definitions to words and she had to figure out which word went there. This one is missing letters. <clears throat> and then here we have fill in the blank. With the fill in the blank one, you do have to create your own sentences. But I mean, these are really easier words. It's not very hard to create sentences. And you just go ahead and type them in with the word in there and it'll create the blank. Alphabetical order. Okay, so that's an example of 
basically how our spelling lists look. Um, and basically what I do is every week she'll get the packet. Here's your packet for the week. It has all your words on it. This is her, hers for this week actually. And then what she does is I just have her <clears throat> first day say it, spell it, say it. We also go over like what are the words, what's the meaning to any of these words that we may need to know the meaning to. Like if there are any up there that she may need to know the meaning to, we'll go over word meaning. Um, whether or not that word can be like a homophone perhaps. Uh, what else do we go over? We also go over the spelling pattern present in each word. And as you can see, these are kind of, they have color in them. And that's because I'm highlighting that <coughs> spelling chunk in there. Basically the phonograms, right? So right here, A-U, A-I. Um, when it comes to things like this, like things ending in L-E, I will just create a little line under it, like P-L-E, consonant L-E type words. Uh, this one is based off of the floss rule, right? That's why it ends in double L. Uh, double L will come in one syllable word after a single short vowel or a broad vowel. You will double the F, L, S, or Z. Okay, I didn't do this one just because in this one the double E is not making the double E sound. So that's why I didn't highlight that one. It's actually making more like an E. Here we have the W, H, and the C, H highlighted. So those are the different phonograms being used there. The one for here is B, Y. Uh, this one I didn't highlight anything, but, you know, there will be like a schwa, O. And then this one is Ud. And the Ud one I actually got off of, uh, we also use Yabeka phonics cards. And I found that instead of teaching my daughter the OU, um, I just grouped it as O-U-L-D. And it was just a lot easier for her to retain. Anyhow, so for this week, here are our activities. Again, a crossword puzzle. She asked for a smaller one this time. And you can theme these like any way you want. This one is a scrambled words one. So she'll just unscramble the words. Next one is alphabetical order. Missing letters week. Missing letters. Fill in the blanks. Correct the spelling. Um, cursive words. And that would be for this week. So yeah, like I said, on the first day we would do uh, say the words, go over the meaning, go over whether or not those words are homophones, go over any spelling rules, spelling patterns, or anything that pertains to those words. <clears throat> um, and then like say it, spell it, say it. Then after that, sometimes I'll just let her go for the day or she might do one of the activities in here, which we usually start with the crossword or the word search. Sorry. Uh, let me see what else then days two through four. Basically what she does, each day she comes in here, we do the say it, spell it, say it. I'll again, like, here and there, go over some of the spelling rules, spelling patterns present in the words. And then she can pick out another activity in the packet to work on. Um, like I said, that's for days two through four. I might even throw in there occasionally where I'll have her write the words in her notebook. So in her notebook... She'll like come in here and write the words sometimes. Right. And I'll have her write them maybe one time each, two times each, three times each. Depends on uh, what I think we need for that day. So we'll just keep doing that. On day four, what I usually do is I'll give her sort of a pre-test or a quiz. Just to see where she is with her words. To see if she needs any additional time with the words. If my daughter does need any additional time with her words, I don't mind giving her that time. That's completely fine with me. If she needs an extra day or two until the weekend, maybe test on Monday, I don't mind doing that. Um, at one, one list we had a while back was very difficult. So for that list, I actually let her work on that list for two weeks and I didn't really mind it. So that's basically how we do our spelling. Uh, different ways to practice the spelling words are using those activities. I also have things like this where we can work on them uh, tactilely, right? 
and then we have our sand. So different ways we can work on the spelling, but this is just the way we do it for some of our past packets. Some of them, that's not all of them. And all these words are color coded. You can also on that website, um, commoncoresheets.com, you can theme your sheets. So Halloween, Christmas, um, you know, Easter, or just a basic, you know, theme. Here are some of our past spelling tests. So this is a spelling test sheet I chose to use for our spelling. Basically, she just writes whatever word I tell her. And then after she's done with the 10 words for the week, I'll go ahead and give her other words that she should know how to spell based on things we worked on for either like math or language or just past spelling words that I feel are necessary to make sure that we review to make sure she knows how to spell them. So she'll get tested on those again. And those should already be in her head, you know. So um, after that, I'll give her like anywhere between two and three phonograms that she'll have to write down. So I'll say ink or awk or ow o. And then she has a star word. So her star word this time was a month of the year. And I gave her September. After that, she gets a dictation sentence that uses some of the spelling words from her spelling list. So this one was, once upon a time, there lived a princess with the heart of gold. She also has to, I also tell her, like when I do it, make sure you start with an uppercase and a punctuation. Okay. And these are just some of the lists. Now, as you can see, I don't do um, letter grades or point grades or anything like that. Basically, all I do is put a smiley face or a sticker or a stamp. If she does get anything wrong, which my whole point, since we're homeschool, is to make sure she's mastered words so she doesn't usually get any wrong. Except here, she got a round wrong and her phonogram ink. She didn't get that one. But uh, it's very rare that she gets words wrong on her tests just because of the fact that like we do homeschool and I can tailor her instruction to her and just make sure she really, really knows it before we test. Okay. So yeah, that's how our spelling looks. That's how I do things here in my house for spelling. No curriculum. I just gathered my list from some of our language arts programs that we use or have used, you know, based on where I felt the need was, where her level was, and we work from there. And yeah, we use these mixed lists like this. So this has been what works best for us. Um, say it, spell it, say it is very, very effective here in our home. I really like that I actually took that idea from Abeka. Abeka spelling, they utilize the say it, spell it, say it. And I just thought that was a really neat way to learn. So, yep, I took um, little pieces from here and there to kind of create our own spelling program here at home. And that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for joining me today. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Have a great day.